Okay, this is section 2.1 from Mac 1105. In this section, we're going to talk about the basics of functions, and we're going to start that discussion with um, vocabulary that relates to functions. First of all, the definition of relation. Relation is just a set of ordered pairs, XY pairs, where the first components are called the domain. Those are the X values. And the back components, the second component, is called the range, which are the y values. So we have domain, those are the x's, we have range, those are the y's, and then just relation, those are sets of ordered pairs. So for instance, some first x and the y that's related to it, then another ordered pair, we could call that the second xy pair, and so on. However many ordered pairs there happens to be in that relation. Okay, if you talk about just the set of x's, that would be the domain. So in what I have showed you here, x1, x2, and x3 would would be the domain, just all the x values from the relation. And then all the y values, the set of the y values would be what we call the range. Okay, let's talk about those because those those values, those ordered pairs, the domain, and the range values can be presented in various formats. So for instance, in this first picture, you see that you have a bar graph where the names of the various celebrities represent the X values, and so they are stretched out, those names are stretched out horizontally along the horizontal axis, and then the amount of money that they make in millions represents the Y axis. So this is a way of presenting X, Y pairs, what we call relations, a set of ordered pairs. Like for instance, if you wanted to get an ordered pair here, you could use the name of the celebrity. I'll just use the last name. That would be the X value. Names are on the X axis. And then how much um, that person makes. And we just assume that the person knows that in these ordered pairs, 95 stands for millions. And if I wanted to write the next ordered pair, it would be the name of celebrity and the salary that that person makes, which is also 95 million. And so on. That same information can be represented in a table where the first column would be the X's and the second column would be the y's. So again, you would get the same ordered pair with this x value being related to this salary in millions and so on. This could be written cowl comma 95, just like I wrote them here. So there are various ways to present ordered pairs to create a relation, which is a collection or a set of ordered pairs. You could also use what's called a mapping diagram where the first bubble would represent the domain, where, in other words, the x's, and the second bubble would represent the y's, or what's called the range. X's are the domains, y's are the range. So it's important to understand what the names are for your x and your y coordinates and what it's called when we talk about a collection of ordered pairs. And mainly because it is very hard for a student to be able to understand what they're being asked to do if they don't understand the words in the directions. So we always start our discussion with um, an overview of the various um, vocabulary terminology, if you will. Okay, when we get to the next section, this is something I already discussed on the previous page that no matter how the information is given, you just have to be familiar with the format. As I said on the bar graph, the numbers stretched along the horizontal axis represented the X's while the salaries coming up the Y axis were represented the Y coordinate. And so you could write ordered pairs. 
um, when you were given the table, first column was the X's, second column was the Y's. If you're given a bubble diagram, a mapping diagram, first bubble is the domain, the X's, and the second bubble is the Y values or the range. So it doesn't really matter which, man, uh, which format they give it to you in. They can all be written as ordered pairs. So here we have a relation. This is an XY pair, XY pair, XY pair, XY pair, XY pair. For instance, Oprah Winfrey is, was clocked in during that particular year that this data was collected as making a salary of 82 million. McGraw was um, tabulated as making a salary of 82 million. Also, Beck was um, charted as making 90 million. And then again, as mentioned on the previous page, if you take out all the X values, Stern, Cowell, Beck, the names of the celebrities, and McGraw, those individual coordinates uh, make up what's called the domain. And if you take out all the back coordinates, which are 95, 80, and 90, and 82, those make up what's called the range. Okay, so a few new words for you. Okay, so now we get into talking about functions and when does a relation, which is just a set of any um, common, you know, any set of combination or collection of ordered pairs, when does that classify as a function? So we have to know the definition of a function. A function is, it can be defined in several ways depending on the wording that makes the most sense to you. Uh, I think the easiest, the clearest way that I could say this is that each X value has to have a unique Y partner. Now, for some people that may not understand the word unique, I could maybe break that down in, even further. Every time you see an X value, it has to be with a particular Y partner, and that X value can never be seen again in the set with a different Y partner. So once the X value partners up with a particular Y value, that's it. That is the partner for that X value for life. It's like it's only that union of, X, of an XY pair, and you cannot see that X anywhere in the set with a different Y partner. So like, for instance, if we were to look at this right here, consider the relation above where we had paired Stern with a salary of 95 million, Cowell with a salary of 95 million, Beck with a salary of 90 million, Winfrey with a salary of 82 million, and McGraw with a salary of 80, also 82 million. We had all these ordered pairs making up what's called a relation. But does the relation qualify as a function? Remember, any X that you see cannot be with two different Y partners. Now, the quickest way to tell that that is um, that the relation qualifies as a function is just check all the X's. If all the X's are different, there's no way that you're going to find an X that has two different Y partners. That's, in the, uh, that's the quickest way to tell whether something's a function. If all the X's are different, as is the case here, because the only thing that violates a relationship being a function is when you see um, the same X partner, the same X value with two different Y partners. So if all of them are different, there's no chance of that happening. So when all of your X values are different, the relation is automatically a function. Okay, notice that in this relation that I have just given you where celebrities were matched up with salary, every single one of the X values, which just happen to be the names of celebrities, they're all different. So yes, this is this relation that you're seeing right here. Yes, it is a function. Okay, then let's consider another example. Consider the following relation. Remember, the easiest way to tell whether something's a function is just check that all the X's are different. If they're not, then you have to look at where did you see the same X value more than once? 
And does that X value have two different Y partners? Because if it does, it's violating the definition of being a function, and therefore it is not a function. Notice here that we have negative 4 in the front with a partner of 0, and we have that same X partner all the way in this ordered pair at the end, but with a different Y partner. So because of that, and there's no other X values that are violating, but if only, if just one X value is violating the definition of what it means to be a function, then that's it. You needn't look for other pairs. But specifically, if we want to give a reason, we could say because the X value negative four at one point has this Y partner and that same X value at another point has a different Y partner. No X value is allowed to have two different Y partners. And that's what it means to have a unique Y partner. Any X that you find in the relation, the set of ordered pairs, is only allowed one Y partner. So this has violated the definition of what it means to be a function. So we say that this relation, which is a set of ordered pairs, just so we can have practice using the vocabulary, this relation is not a function. Okay, a relation or a set of ordered pairs can also be given the form in a graph, in the form of a graph, because anything that can be listed as an XY pair, you can plot those points and you can connect those points in the shape of a graph, in the shape of a picture. So sometimes instead of them listing out the X and the Y pairs in relation form, they're going to give you those ordered pairs in the form of a graph. So if you're trying to test this definition, are all the X partners uniquely paired with one and only one Y partner? If you're trying to test that out when you're looking at a graph, what you have to use is what's called the vertical line test because that vertical line test looks for X values that have more than one Y partner. And the way it identifies X values that have more than one Y partner is that when you pass a vertical line right through your graph, if that vertical line cuts through the graph more than one time, you have just found an X value that's violating the definition of what it means to be a function. If you pass a vertical line and it cuts through the graph in more than one place, that means you have found an X value that has two different Y partners and therefore fails at being a function. So, so like I said, sometimes um, you're going to be given distinct ordered pairs and you can just check that all the X's are different. And if they're not, go and look for the X that you suspect may have two different Y partners. Like here we found this one and this one. And right away we knew that this was not a function because this X value has a Y partner of zero and also a Y partner of four. And so that is why it was not a function. Okay, let's say that we give you a bunch of XY pairs all in the form of a graph. Somebody has come in and plot a bunch of different XY pairs and then they've also connected it with some kind of curve, some kind of line or curve or whatever the shape is that connects all the points. That is what's being done here. They haven't specifically listed each of the X's and the Y's, but they have plotted them, gone ahead and connected them and what you're going to do to tell whether it's a function is you're going to perform the vertical line test. And I'll write this out one time and then I'm going to be abbreviating it. Okay, this will be abbreviated like this from now on. I'm going to perform the vertical line test. And if the vertical line test shows a vertical line that passes through the graph more than once
then it's not a function. I'll finish this in the next video.